Hello and welcome exiles to my holy relic ascendant leveling guide. Now I say leveling guide and I put some emphasis on trying to put this together because ascendant doesn't get holy relic from the start of the game and quite frankly holy relic is bad to level with to begin with and then on top of that ascendant has a tree that starts out with uh, how do I put this no damage it starts out with no damage it's very very hard in terms of starting a character with Ascendant compared to any of the other classes because naturally the other classes get a lot of damage from their first 10 points. Ascendant gets like 40%, other classes get something close to 100 to 150% with their first 10 passes. So it's kind of a big disparity. Now, I decided to end up going with a Spark plus Orb of Storm setup solely because this seemed like the strongest DPS I could get. And also I tried quite a few other setups. I tried to level with Explosive Trap and Purifying Flame that didn't feel great. I tried to level with just Absolution, that didn't feel great. I tried to level with SRS, and ultimately that didn't feel too great to me either. There were a lot of issues with a lot of the different things I tried, and I settled on this because it felt the best damage-wise, and it felt the easiest progression-wise. And the idea I came up with is I was going to spec decently a little bit into making this build work by grabbing the spell damage nodes close to Scion at the start, even though they're not very efficient per point. And then I was going to respec by the time I could go for Ball Lightning, Unleash, and Herald of Agony. Herald of Agony is great for early leveling because, quite frankly, this skill has innately a lot of percent damage and flat damage scaling. So the idea is, if I can just get to level 38 with my early setup, and then do a small respec in Herald of Agony, that can then carry me to the Holy Relic Swap. I tried a lot of things, Herald of Agony for one, felt decent at the point i have unleash and ball lightning on it it felt okay with just ball lightning and chance to poison but really unleash is what tipped it over the edge of feeling good and so i thought you know what that was something i tried to level from act two onwards and it, there were some issues with not having convocation and not having a good ball lightning to inflict max basically virulent stacks for scaling for that so that's why i ended up going with this setup where we simply prioritize doing the vendor recipe to get our better and better flat damage lightning damage scepters and that mostly needs to carry our damage to get us through to level 38 and that's where we are now when i'm doing this malachi this setup i think end up end up being the smoothest i could do i'm not a fast player in all the way doing all the labs doing lab itself and doing the um malachi fight we ended up doing it in about two hours and five minutes now this is my first four act run with this setup specifically and there definitely was an improvement i'd like to get on this character to make that dial that time down but i'm pretty happy with that being the fact i'm not a racer to begin with so i'm you know of course satisfied because that still was much faster than my previous test with my other skills given that my other skills was getting me through act three with about an hour and 40 minutes not having done Sayosa, not having done a couple of the lab trials so there were some issues there now real quick before we go in game i want to go over the leveling pub i made for you guys quick tips pretty much things like uh, you can you can copy and paste this string right here into the vendor like you go to Tarclay and Act 1 you copy and paste this string You'll see the highlighted links for things like blue 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 green Which you need for frost blink plus arcane surge or blue green for spark plus pierce or blue green for orbis Storms plus onslaught Stuff like the early two links are great if you get blue blue green or green green blue that's also great for the three link options and then it also has stuff for if there's some flat damage to spells or if there's plus one or if there is a item with something like movement speed on the boots it will highlight those in the vendor so it's really easy whenever you level stop by tarclay copy and paste this in there maybe there's something that could help you with your leveling after that, these are the basic gems I recommend getting. I didn't end up picking up Molten Shell in my run through, but this is a gem you'll want to pick up eventually. It's probably something you pick up when we swap to Determination, which will happen roughly close to when we get the Reservation Nodes at the outside of Templar. When you have those Reservation Nodes plus the Determination Reservation Mastery, you should be able to run the 4-Link Herald of Agony plus Determination plus Vitality. Um, that should make sense, hopefully. Um, outside of that, we have stuff like the vendor recipe for flat damage you want to do this every single chance you get you want to try to upgrade the flat damage because that is going to greatly affect how well you can kill monsters and continue to level through the campaign because that flat damage kind of carries even though we have a really weak tree to start so definitely look over this i highly recommend you get an idea of how this works uh, because you basically just take a topaz ring plus a magic scepter 
plus a orb of alteration you vendor that and you'll get a magic scepter back with flat damage to lightning to spells which is very nice outside of that stuff in act two we pick up is herald of thunder faster attacks that's the ones i can remember faster attacks are leap slam for leap slamming faster and then herald of thunder for a bit of extra flat these are things we're going to drop like herald of thunder we eventually drop faster attack leap slam we eventually drop but that's not done until later in the character when we drop uh i would actually would like to keep leap slam i might not keep faster attacks but i actually would like to keep leap slam later on so i'll probably figure that out in the end game pob uh pickups for the quest reward siosa you definitely want to do siosa without siosa you can't really get holy relics i recommend buying holy relic off him when you get him so that way you can level it in your offhand that way when you do get to the point where you get to swap the holy relic you have a leveled gem and a leveled holy relic does damage if you try to swap the holy relic with a level one holy relic it will do no damage and it will instantly die so you definitely want to have that gem leveled Outside of that, it also gives us access to Ball Lightning and Slower Proj, which is necessary for the Herald of Agony swap. So hopefully this stuff makes sense. I'll probably be refining this as I go, and maybe there will be an even better fully flushed out PUB. But until then, this will give you an idea of what the leveling looks like, because I have leveling trees from all the way from 10 all the way up to level 60, which is what I'm going to showcase you now. Now let's hop into the swap where we actually have Holy Relic set up for the character. So... This is roughly where you farmed up enough chaos for a Praxis plus a Joffrey's Crest. Um, ideally, you want to eventually get Elrion minus four, but the build can run this fine with just Praxis. The character's still going to work. I accidentally leveled my Desecrate, so I'm going to get a lower level Desecrate just to showcase all you need is the Praxis. You don't need the minus mana cost on your craft here. Um, it's just a little bit less smooth. So eventually you'll get... Uh, eventually you will get the... Uh, uh, the minus mana cost and that will allow you to drop praxis and then you'll get percent reduced mana cost on your flasks and you'll have pathfinder flasks and stuff like that going uh, but for the meantime early on when you want to jump into this character you do want a praxis initially and i'd recommend one with a minus eight max rolls what you want to go for these are pretty common that would i be ideal early league okay now Outside of that stuff, the initial setup we have is Ray Specter, Summon Stone Golem, uh, Meat Shield, plus a Feeding Frenzy support. Meat Shield is a taunt on enemies, which makes us take 10% less damage. Feeding Frenzy is a damage multiplier for our, our Holy Relics, gives them like 10% more damage, I believe. And then outside of that, we have Summon Holy Relic with Predator, with Brutality, with Meat Shield. These are the four link support that we're starting off early on. Basically, around early white maps, we want to go to a six link setup, um, and I'll have links recommendations when I have the full build guide out for that. But initially, this four link does just fine. Outside that, we have Cyclone, Castle Channeling, Desecrate, and then you have to pick initially which which offering you want to go with. Do you want to go with Spirit for damage, Bone Offering for for basically defenses, or do you want to go for Flesh Offering for moving a bit faster throughout the map? I think I'd like Spirit Offering early on because I, I really want to get single target early on. These guys initially, before you get some levels on them, they're kind of weak single target, so I like Spirit Offering. But Bone Offering is great for tank if you're having issues with dying because, quite frankly, it's hard to beat the amount of block those things are giving you. Also, on top of that, I'm going to actually put this on because actually I think it bricks my fire res to have not have this on. Uh, anyways, uh, this is what it looks like without it on for our mana. We don't really have mana problems, so I I do I'm pretty sure our fire res is bricked if I don't have this on. So I'm, I'm gonna put that on actually. You guys are getting me like 35 fire res or something. Um, outside of that, the other gems are frost blink, pride, vulnerability, dread banner, determination, vitality, leap slam, faster attacks. Pretty much just mobility plus auras is all we're doing with those things, and then vulnerability for a curse to put on bosses whenever we want to do a little bit extra single target. And I will go ahead and make sure we have fresh new zone because i just ran this guy through a rogue arbor i want to do one with actual like monsters in it um this is pretty much what it's going to be you're just going to be cycloning and your holy relics are going to be doing the orbs of damage basically around you killing whatever monsters you're running into initially uh you're not super fast until you get your pathfinder flask we don't have merc lab on this character pathfinder flask with the quicksilver and stuff start to make this character feel much much quicker and then the next speed upgrade is when we get the uh leash of oblation belt which allows us to have the try offerings which gives us the flesh offering as well as the um spirit offering as well as the bone offering we get all three and uh another thing i probably should make sure i do i have offering in fact heck yeah, i want to make sure i didn't forget about this don't want to level that up we'll go ahead and we'll do this fight real quick um 
but initially it starts out you're a little bit slow on movement speed but those should improve pretty quickly just getting the first just getting to merc lab getting yourself some okay flasks and uh it's still just a bend to win lifestyle right bend to win eat as many attacks as possible because we're not really paying attention to what we're doing um, and then that's kind of i guess <laughs> give you an idea of what you can expect when you're doing the swap initially at level 50 or whatever these guys aren't uh, a crazy hard boss fight but it should give you an idea of we are a level 59 character this is the level 60 area give you an idea of what to expect if you're kind of on equal planes field equal playing field in terms of leveling with your content and then on top of that you get a pretty nice big power spike when you go to the six link staff which should be pretty cheap on trade as well as you get nice power spikes every time you level your holy relic because this is only level 15 you get five more levels that will be power spikes and then ideally you want to be leveling like six holy relics in your offhand so that way you can vow one and try to get a level 21 again for another power spike on your character's damage in single target along with holy relics surviving and giving you more regen anyways hopefully this gives you a good idea of perspective on the leveling process 1 to 38 spark plus orb of storms 38 to about 50 to 60 range however long it takes you to be able to buy a joffrey's crest and then holy relic you just get to play till the end game and i'm going to make an actual like fully fleshed out guide but that's going to require me to also do some testing with early to mid game to late game and then set up a bigger fully fleshed out tree i just wanted to get the leveling guide out there so you guys had an idea of what this looks like on a league start given it is a scion and it does have to deal with a tree like this where initially you start out with such a rough tree i'll ultimately too i think i don't like this i want to actually have a path through the resistances i've decided this is one of the initial this is one of the first test setups i did so it's kind of scuffed how i have this set up but We'll, we'll improve it, we'll get it better, and then uh, the POB I will have with the leveling trees and stuff, that will be attached to this for leveling from 1 to basically 60 or whatever, will hopefully give you an idea of that process. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching, Exiles. Take care, and peace out.